Hello racers and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to do have a review of the Phantom Fax Machine 3 which is a precision brushless rotor tester. And what that allows you to do is test the magnetic strength of the rotor that's in your brushless motor. Now these, this particular one is made by Phantom. Uh, you can order it in various places. I see they sell them on their own site. They also sell them at A-Main Hobbies, and this one was purchased at Michael's RC Hobbies. In the box, you get a very small instruction sheet that tells you to uh, see the instructional video online. And if you don't have internet, internet access, please call. Also in the box, you get a power cord power supply and the actual unit itself with an LCD display, a couple of switches and the holder for the sensor. Let's just put this aside. Let's plug this in and we'll take a little demo of how to use it and then what I like and not like about this particular item. Okay, so simply plug in the cord Turn the power on. It's got a nice little welcome screen. It shows you the, the um, Gauss reading for each one of the sensors. And we'll take a little, um, a little rotor in here. On a previous video, I, I was doing a test of these Reed, Reedy spec rotors. Now what you do is you put them in. You make sure the rotor is, the barrel of the rotor is centered with the the sensors and then you just simply turn the rotor and you can see on this side the the center of this particular magnet is about where those numbers are and as I roll those towards that sensor you can see them increase 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 until the point that they decrease and that is the center of that magnet on that side and you can see that this is a 1478 milligauss rotor and at the same time it's reading the the reading on the opposite side and you can see the other side is a 1512 so one side of the rotor is a little stronger than the other yep so the things i like about this it's super simple to use it has a reset button to reset it if you want to retry your test you can see once again 1478 and 1510 was the other side. Uh, I do like the backlit display, although I never really use this with the, the display off. I always have it backlit, so I, I appreciate that it is backlit. And one thing that I do like about this particular this uh, rotor tester is that the distance between the rotor and the little sensor is fixed and what it doesn't seem obvious when you first look at it but what that allows you to do is test different rotors that are different have different size barrels like you can see some of the 21.5 um, motors they'll come with a, a smaller barrel it'll come with like a 12 millimeter across barrel where some of the modified motors come with a 13 millimeter across and why is that important you ask uh, because the closer you move the barrel to the sensor, the stronger the sensor is. So I'll give a little example here. We'll turn. That we know that the center of the magnet is about those those letters there. We'll turn it till we see that that increases to say 1489, and then I'll pick the rotor up and I'll move it towards that sensor, and you can see it, the reading going up to 2000 into actual over limit. So you could see that if you were testing uh, rotors with different size barrels here, that you'd get the closer that you can get this barrel to the sensor, uh, the stronger that it will read, which kind of replicates what it's doing inside a brushless motor where the stator is fixed. And the, the closer that you can move that, the barrel of the rotor to that stator, the stronger that motor will be. Um, 
So one, some of the improvements that I would make to this little device, if there ever was a fax machine for, this is what I would put in, in my wish list. Now the first thing I'd like to see is a single sensor design. And the reason I say that, this has two sensors, one on top and bottom, and we saw that as I rolled the center of that magnet to the top, it increased. And you can see on the other side that the, it's reading as well. Um, what I did notice is that because it's two sensors, the readings from each sensor are slightly different. For example, here's me moving that center of the magnet to the top. Press reset. I roll it up. And you can see that it's about a 1478 here. But if I take the same magnet, and this time I'll roll it back down to there, that it reads, let's read it up. 1491. So the same magnet, pole of this magnet, reads higher depending on the sensor it's pointing at. And then as we learned, it could be just a millimeter difference between the sensor and closer to the barrel on one of the ends, or it could be something in the circuitry that's not calibrated. But if it was just a single sensor design, I think that that would eliminate that. Uh, another thing is that, that I noticed with this design is that the rotor itself, and I'll just turn it this way and hopefully you can see, the center of the sensor is not in line with the sensor, the center of the rotor. It's actually up a little higher. You can see that it's raised above the center of that. These little sensors are very directional, so it'd be kind of reading like down on the on the barrel instead of straight across. I'd, I'd prefer to see that at 90 degrees. And the last thing that I noticed is the little holder itself. Um, when you do your... I'll just give a little demo here about the holder. I'll take the little shim off. Um, we know that it was about 1478 at the top when I moved this little thing to the top. So what I'll do is I'll push the rotor all the way to one end. So now it's reading kind of the, the left of that rotor of the magnet. And I'll just turn it and you can see that it only reads now 1440. So you can see the magnetic field isn't the same across the whole barrel. That the center of the magnet is stronger. So you have to kind of shim, shim it within the holder to get it centered. It's not that hard, but it just takes a bit of time so that it makes it a little bit more difficult to compare rotors of different styles. And here's a rotor of another style. As you can see, this one here has kind of a bigger, bigger shaft until it's cut and milled down. Same on the pinion side. I do notice that some manufacturers sell them that, sell these different style. And when it's in the, the holder, it's Sometimes it uh, doesn't fit quite right. You can see this is up on the high side, that's down in the low. I found that this rotor tested best with both on the high. But as you kind of manipulate it, it slides back and forth. And we know that it's pretty picky sliding back and forth. So it would in be interesting to see if they could get a little different ro holder design. Either a little bit wider would help, or maybe a little bit narrower would help. And that's my thoughts about improvements to the Phantom Fax Machine 3. So, just make a short video this, this time. Uh, if you do like these types of videos, click like. If you want to see some more of these videos, click subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, just put them in the comments below. I'll put a link to, to this um, this uh, sensor meter links to the Phantom website so you can take a look at it, see what they have to describe it. And uh, if you want to get yourself one, please do. Okay, well, that's it for today's video. We will see you in the next.